Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming today. So I'm here to share with you some research we have done on how the impact on the new technologies um, is affecting the job roles in the industry. So what we're really looking into is how we need to bridge those two communities, right? Most of you today raise your hand to say, I identify myself as an IT professional, a few of you as a developer, right? These two words don't really connect that well today. And the effort that you saw in this area of Cisco Live in DevNet is really all about that, right? Building this bridge. Um, how many of you are familiar with the Cisco certification program? I assume many of you, right? Very good. So we have programs in the certification um, world within Cisco that is actually addressing exactly this point, right? Um, I, I'm into the Learning at Cisco team, and the Learning at Cisco team is really working to enable this transition to happen, right, between many other things. So we will take a look at what, how the industry is evolving and why this is providing at the same time opportunities and also causing some challenges in the industry in terms of talent gaps, right? And then what are the new skills that are required in order to uh, be able to um, be ready for these transitions? And so how we can help too, right? So first of all, let's take a look at um, what are the, 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 the catalysts of these transitions, right? We have definitely a lot of um, different components that play a role. There is the number of uh, users that leverage the, the IT infrastructure, which is growing um, enormously. Um, of course, the quality of the content is changing, so we are moving from plain data to rich media, which is also um, causing some challenges. And then, of course, the speed that it uh, comes with it, the amount of storage, the just amount of, the factor of scale with, that the network need to um, be supporting. So there is also another component, right? Let's take a look at three aspects of this, trans of this evolution. The first one is the um, real new fuel that is fueling this, all this, this, this evolution are the data. The data today are really what is the value, if you wish, that is inside the IT infrastructure, right? We are not talking anymore about pipes that are just providing you a ways to connect devices, but we're really talking about the data and the semantic of the data that is helping you bring you new value to your business. Now, the data are generated by objects, are generated by people, and they lead to and they enable new, new business processes. So all those components together require, put some requirements on the, on the IT infrastructure itself and how it is evolving. The other important component is the merging of different technologies. The fact that now we have available many different, different new ways of, of empowering the, the infrastructure, right? We have definitively uh, mobility. Uh, we have the transition into the cloud model which is definitely introducing a lot of new ways of operating the IT infrastructure itself. As I said, mentioned already, we have the data that are really the key and the focus. And then, of course, we have a lot of challenges in the security space. Now, all of that together is forcing the IT professionals to look at the infrastructure in a very different way. So it's no more, as I was mentioning before, what I just said, a plain infrastructure, right? But the focus is all on the application that is leveraging the data and are enabling the business processes. So the, the application is at the center of the IT transition, right? So how many of you heard about application-centric infrastructure, right? That's the new important innovation that came along. So that's the keyword. 
okay? So the infrastructure is way more integrated with the application. And of course, as you can imagine, that also in cause the people and IT professionals to think in a different way and to have to gain new skill sets. Let's talk about the skill sets. What is really interesting is that if you think about it today, there are college students that are preparing for jobs that don't exist in the industry yet, right? However, those job roles are actually needed already. So there is a gap that gets created. All the transition that we just discussed before, moving from infrastructure to data and their semantic, moving from pipes through the applications that run on the pipes as the focus of the attention, and also the integration of different technologies and the breakup of all these different silos, security, mobility, software, applications on top, that is really causing a, a disruption in the talent gap in the industry, right? People need to start thinking in a very different way, needs to have different kind of skill set. So we have to be able to enable individuals that are already in the industry today to manage this transition, okay? Some of the job roles that are listed in this chart are really still an extension of the traditional roles that, are, that were that there today in the, in the IT industry. Some of them are really new, completely different from what we have ever seen before. The other component of, of all of this revolution, if you wish, is the plain, simple factor of scale, right? So if you look into how many, and I'm saying devices, but I would say more than devices as we mentioned before, right? People, objects, processes, and uh, data storage are connected to the, to the infra IT infrastructure now, that factor of scale is absolutely causing another, ask, another new talent gap, right, in the industry based on plain numbers, right? We need to grow the amount of people that is able to operate on the, in the IT world much faster than we can. So a way to mitigate that is to create more intelligence in what we are doing, right? So being able to automate, being able to simplify the way we operate on the infrastructure, if you want, will mitigate the problem of how many people we need to bring into this new environment in order to be able to cope with the factor of scale. So the fact that we are bringing in more automation and you know, if you move into a cloud model, orchestration and simplification is also requiring individuals to gain new skills in terms of um, how, you know, how they, they bring this, this, this added value into the plain IT infrastructure. So if you look at this chart, it really tells you the story, right? What it was before the IT professional now has to branch out in many different directions. Let's take a look at the different directions. First of all, we already mentioned, right? We have automation, we have orchestration, we have integration with applications. So that means that while before the application team was on one side, the infrastructure team was on a different uh, side of the organization, now this team have to cooperate. If you bring in a, 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 a cloud model in your, in your environment, people that are used to work with devices and cables now need to think into a completely different perspective. Everything is virtualized. Everything is, we don't even know where it is, right? So the, the, the fact that we are, we are integrating the different teams mean, means that also we need to uh, enable these teams to talk to each other and understand the, the requirements that one put on the other team, right? And vice versa. So definitely there is the, the, uh, the introduction of uh, um, a 
more capabilities in terms of uh, bringing automation into, into the, the management of your infrastructure. The other aspect is that, and, and that involves, of, of course, software development and programmability skills, right? And we'll talk more about that, which is the focus of what I'm going to discuss later. The other aspect is, is the fact that, as I was mentioning before, moving the focus from the infrastructure itself and the data that are into the infrastructure means that now you need to understand why the data are so important. What is the semantic of those data, right? And what you can obtain out of them, right? Out of the value that they are carrying. That means that the, the, you need to really understand the requirement from the business perspective and bring them into what you are you are, you are doing with your, the data that are carried into your infrastructure and stored into your infrastructure. So the connection between the business side and the technology side is much more tight. So um, the fact that we need to be able to have different teams that come from very different backgrounds to cooperate in such a tight fashion is causing another talent gap in the, in the industry and in the, in the IT workforce. So we've been there before, right? We had multiple transitions similar to this one, and we analyzed that a little more. If I had this discussion a few years back, the discussion was really focused on breaking the silos between the different pieces of the technology. So we were discussing the individuals that are working in the, in the, on, the, on the servers, need to start talking to the individuals that are working on the infrastructure and they need to be able to talk to the people that manage the databases and the data and the storage of the data themselves. That is in the past, right? Today, that's not even a question. Technology silos are broken. The virtualization already had that transition, right? Made, made that transition happen. Today, we are really talking of a breaking silos that are from the bottom, from the foundational of the infrastructure towards the applications and towards the value that those applications bring into your business. So that means that basically you have a shift that is required to the IT professionals in terms of what they need to bring to the, to the table. So if you look at this chart, it's an analysis that we have been doing in the last year, year and a half driven really by the introduction of the new technologies like cloud and programmability and internet of everything, what is that requiring the IT professionals, right? In terms of skills and the analysis of what they need to do day in, day out in their, in their, on their job. In the past, if you look at the darker bars, you definitely had a lot of activity focus on the deployment, the management, kind of the day two operations, right? Today, that is the piece that we are trying to offload and move it into the automation, orchestration, cloud deployment model. That means that proportionally to the growth of the infrastructure, we don't have the similar factor of scale in the needs of people that are doing repetitive jobs and tasks that can be automated. But of course, that also means that these same individuals need to be able to perform the automation and that they have to understand what orchestration means and they have to be able to bring that into the table, onto the table. So today, the IT professional can bring more value to their business, right? They can bring optimization. They can bring simplification. And that will enable that scale that we were talking about before. That wouldn't be possible if we didn't have those skills in the workforce and of course the technologies that enable that. If you look from the hiring manager perspective, what, they are, what the hiring managers are looking for into candidates is a different set of skills from the past. Of course, this is not happening overnight, 
right? Is a transition that we are observing. We look definitively less repetitive tasks, as I was saying. Where is my CLI, right? Do I really need to do hundreds and hundreds of same configuration on hundreds and hundreds of devices that are the same? And automation can do it for, for us, right? Now, we have done automation in the past. I'm pretty sure that most of you have been operating on your devices through scripting, right? However, we are really looking in, into a completely new perspective. The network itself and the IT infrastructure itself, the virtualized infrastructure, is now offering to you, with the new technologies, a way higher level of abstraction. That means that you are now enabled, you have much more powerful tools to interact with the infrastructure through automation. So you need to really think about how do I evolve my skill sets to be able to bring that value to my organization, right? Let's zoom in a little bit more into one aspect of this. We mentioned several different technologies, right, in the last few minutes. Cloud, we mentioned automation, we mentioned um, uh, orchestration, we mentioned, um, of course, data, ma data management. One big transformation, of course, that you all are aware because we are all in this, in this um, area of, the, of Cisco Live, is, you know, has been brought in by the so-called SDN set of technologies. SDN is a big word, right? Um, of course, different people have different opinions. And of course, you have a very abstract concept of what SDN is, right? But you all probably know that in reality, SDN is basically nothing else than abstracting your control function from your network. However, even that is not completely true. If you've done experiment on it, you realize that we are probably more likely talking about something like this, right? Where you have a hybrid situation. Some functions are in the infrastructure. Some function gets extracted from it. And you are now leveraging your new skills to bring that value into that higher level of, of abstraction that the network is offering you. So even if we have done this before in the past, right, we had many different ways of writing scripts and interacting with different levels of the management in your IT infrastructure. Now we are talking to a much more powerful set of tools that we have available to us. So what the, infra the IT infrastructure is offering us are much more powerful APIs. Now we are looking at the infrastructure no more device by device, but we are looking at a higher level function. That's not enough, right? If you go beyond that, now we are, we are looking into a model in which you're not even seeing the network or, or your overall virtualized storage anymore. You're really looking at your infrastructure from the perspective of the application. I describe my application, I describe my requirements, and there is something in the infrastructure itself that is doing all that, let me say, repetitive set of tasks for me automatically. That is a new model that Cisco has brought to the, to the industry, right? It, when, when we talk about ACI, this is what we're talking about. It's really being able to describe what the application needs and automatically the infrastructure with the in intelligence that is in it is automatically interpreting that and deploying everything for me. If you've seen some demos, then you know that you are reducing the time of configuring a complex infrastructure by a factor of like hundreds of times, right? Does that mean that I don't know anymore anything about what the, what the infrastructure is doing for me? If there is anything that I need to troubleshoot or debug, 
I'm helpless, right? If I don't understand what the, what the infrastructure and what, what these, these uh, layers of software that are between the application and the devices and the pipes that are in the infrastructure and the storage and all of that are doing for me, of course, that is not true, right? We need to still understand everything that we did before, but we just don't physically do it ourselves anymore. So that is where the bridge starts forming between the developers and the IT professionals that still have all the understanding of what the infrastructure is doing for me. We've been there before again, right? So with the convergence of different technologies, we had to stretch ourselves, right? When we started converging video, data, into the same infrastructure, people with different backgrounds had to come together and come with a common language and come to a common pers perspective of the infrastructure that they were dealing with now. So now, with these new technologies brought into the mix, we are really looking at building a team effort between individuals with a different set of skills. The networker, traditional networkers, and the developers. Those two teams are not overlapping. We don't have networkers becoming developers, and we don't have developers becoming networkers, right? It's a team effort. And if you look at this chart, it's really interesting to see how we identified what are the tasks and the, and the skill set that these two teams need to still have and how they can merge, they have to merge and they have to be able to work together to make this transition happen. So we don't box people, right? We never do. So what happened is that people can stretch themselves one direction or the other one. But the important thing is that we need to be able to build the bridge between the two groups so that they can have a common understanding of what they are doing together. We have a, actually a, a, done analysis on which are the, the set of skills that need to evolve to be able to build this bridge between those two groups of individuals. And it is very interesting if you look at that chart to see how the different job roles slowly evolve in order to be able to accommodate some of the skill set of the other group, enough to be able to cooperate. So now, the point is, how do we get there? Do I need to build a totally new myself in order to be able to achieve the, the goals that this transition are, are requiring me? Or do I need to evolve my skill set so that I can actually be able to stretch myself as far as I want to be able to reach out on the other side of the bridge and being able to build this new model with the other group of individuals? So the answer is in between, right? We provide a set of tools that you can leverage to enhance your skill set. And then it will be up to you to leverage those di different building blocks, trainings, and eventually exams and certifications in order to be able to build your you, new yourself of the future that is able to embrace those transitions. We have identified four different job roles that are really addressing this transition. And of course, they include the application team so we have definitively components that hit the application team and makes the application team evolve to be able to deploy and optimize their application onto this new open model of IT infrastructure. And then, of course, we have the developer role, which needs to understand enough to be able to perform their, their, their job into, the specific, into specifically the IT world and the networking infrastructure. And then, of course, we have the architect that needs to understand how those new technologies enable themselves to leverage the best 
out of the, 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 the open infrastructure that now they have available. And then we have the engineer that is still the individual that is deploying the applications and they're deploying the infrastructure so that everything works together in an harmonic way. And of course, there are different technologies. So we built this in a very modular way so that you can actually address this one at a time and grow your skill set in the different areas of those new technologies. More open at the lower level, and then at a higher level, leveraging these this additional um, uh, functionalities that the infrastructure offers you that are at a higher level of ab abstraction, that allows you much more powerful interaction with the IT infrastructure. And of course, we have uh, built this into curriculums that you can, you can leverage in order to achieve the goal of expanding your skill sets. Now, I'm not sp spending too much time on this chart. It's really giving you an idea of what are the new skills and you know, when the different components are available. Most of it is available today at this point. But it really gives you an idea of the fact that we are not talking about the creation of completely new job roles, but we are talking about the evolution of where you are towards where you will be need, need to be in, 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 in the next two to five years. So, you know, if you look into what is required to you down the, ro down the road, say, few years from now, you will see that you need to start building now, right? Because if you don't, by the time your um, new skills are really required and they are mainstream in the industry, you won't be ready, right? So you need to find out what is really the path that you want to follow and find the different components that enable you to walk onto this path, right? To get you where you need to go. And as you go in this journey, you will explore the new op option that you have available, the new possibilities, and you will find the correct way for you. And there is not a right or wrong way. You can think of yourself as, well, I can't become a developer, or if you are a developer, I can't become a networker, right? There are steps that you walk through that will enable you to get as far as you, as you will feel comfortable, okay? So I just want to wrap up this, this conversation really quickly uh, with a couple of, um, of points. First of all, you will find all the detailed information on these programs on the Cisco Learning Network. That is the specific website where you have all the information that are concern, concerning the Cisco certifications. The website link is www.ciscolearningnetwork.com and you will find all the specialist certifications in the network programmability space that will help you in this transition. 